quick summary of the preceding uh, related to the fundamental theorem of calculus and the reasons for it. Uh, we take the graph, uh, we take the function y equals x cubed plus 5. Uh, we do a complete table uh, showing the slopes, average altitudes, areas, accumulated areas, also the rates of slope change. And the rate of slope change is easily understood. We just take uh, this slope minus this slope, for example, uh, the difference is 0.66 divided by the width of the trapezoid, and we get the rate of slope change, which is 6.6. .6. This is motivated by the fact that we look at these slopes, we see, if we can do a little mental arithmetic, that they are changing at a constant rate. This gives us an idea of how the slopes are changing. Of course, we know calculus. We know that this represents a second derivative or an approximation of the second derivative. And the second derivative of this function being linear, being uh, 6x, basically. Uh, we just multiply these x values by 6, and these are what we get. So uh, that, that's what they represent in this case. It's a very important quantity for, say, analyzing waves, analyzing diffusion, analyzing some of the things that we will eventually accomplish, or, uh, uh, eventually uh, be thinking about if we continue uh, our education along these lines uh, far enough in certain fields. Okay, so anyhow, here's the trapezoidal approximation graph, TAG trapezoidal approximation graph <coughs> for y equals x cubed plus 1. I don't have to read it to you. You know how these numbers represent up here. If you don't, you should look at the full video. Uh, instead of the summary. Okay, now, next thing we do, we do the trapezoidal approximation graph of the accumulated areas, meaning that the altitudes become the accumulated areas, and our x values, our horizontal axis values, uh, remain uh, the same as they were. Now, up to x equals 1, we accumulated no area. So their value here is going to be 0. And I wasn't able to label that. But then the values 0.617, 1.27, up through 3.51 are represented here. Uh, not all that legible. I should have labeled them a little lower. But uh, I, I think they're fairly legible. And in any case, you know what those numbers are from here. And also from where is it? the air is accumulated areas from here. OK? Now, we calculate. We could calculate the areas here. Uh, that turns out to not be particularly interesting for what we're doing right now, even though it might have an interesting interpretation in an application. Uh, what we want to look at, though, is the slopes of the accumulated area graph. And we calculate those. They're very easily calculated. And here they are. And uh, then we note that these slopes appear to be the same as the average altitudes. Okay, if we look at these numbers and these numbers, uh, they seem to match. Uh, and it turns out, actually, that they match perfectly uh, if we calculate all the numbers to all the significant figures, uh, to, you know, if we calculate the exact values. Okay, so it appears then that the average slopes of our accumulated area graphs graph uh, are the average altitudes of the original graph. Oh, well, that seems kind of astounding. It turns out that it's uh, there's a very straightforward explanation for it, though. And that explanation is right at the heart of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So what's the simple explanation? Well, the difference between two of these accumulated areas is just the area of the corresponding trapezoid over here. In other words, we had area 0.617 accumulated up to this point. To get to 1.27, we added this area to get this. And then to this, we added this area to get this, and so forth. So every change, and, and, and OK, over here, when we calculate the slope, we're going to calculate the change in the accumulated area. But that change is just the area of the trapezoid that got added to the previous accumulated area to get the new area. So the change between here and here is just this. So the slope of our accumulated area graph between any two points is the change in the accumulated area, obviously the rise, the change in the uh, value measured in this direction, which is the accumulated area, divided by the width of the trapezoid. Well, what's that? Uh, that's the area of the original trapezoid divided by the width, because the change in the accumulated area here is the area of the original trapezoid. 
but what's the area of the original trapezoid? How did we calculate that? We found the average graph altitude and we multiplied it by the width. So the area of the original trapezoid is the average altitude of the original trapezoid multiplied by the width and we're dividing that by the width. Well, what's that leave us? That leaves us the average altitude of the original trapezoid and explains this statement completely. Now, there are some calculus connections here, obviously. Uh, it might not be obvious if you haven't had calculus. And if you haven't, uh, you could conceivably put off the rest of this discussion, uh, but it's not going to go on too long, so it might be worth looking at. Okay. Uh, now, what we have here, this trapezoidal graph, is a graph of our accumulated area function. Okay. Now, we don't have the exact accumulated area, but we used a pretty small increment where the uh, changes weren't all that great. Changes in the function values weren't all that great. Um, the curvature of the function is small enough that we actually get a pretty good approximation here. So, uh, our accumulated area function is our change in antiderivative function. Okay, the accumulated area um, under the graph um, is just equal to the change in the antiderivative between our initial point and whatever point we're looking at. And uh, that actually corresponds to a definite integral. We'll worry about that connection in a minute. But our antiderivative function, and if you haven't had calculus, it's a very simple rule for calculating antiderivative function for a polynomial. Okay, and this is a polynomial. And we use that rule to get this antiderivative function, which as in previous um, clips, I've denoted with a kind of a capital fancy Y. So what's the change in this antiderivative function between here and any one of these points? If we let t stand for the value of one of these points, we don't want to let x stand because x uh, represents um, all these coordinates. I don't, I don't want to get into the reasons I use t, but I use t to represent the 1.1, 1.2, and so forth. Okay, so y of t is t to the fourth over 4 plus 5t, just plugging in t here. And y of 1 is this. So if I subtract y of 1 from y of t, I get uh, the change in the accumulated area, the antiderivative function. So that minus that, and you can see that simplifies to this. And then I've advised you to evaluate this for t values 1, 1.1, 1.2, up through 1.5. And you see that they will very, very closely match these accumulated areas. Now, if I'd have used a bigger interval here, they wouldn't have matched as well. If I used a smaller interval, they would match even better. As the interval shrinks to 0, the increment shrinks to 0, uh, the matching approaches perfection. Okay, so that the change in the accumulated area matches this uh, antiderivative function. And of course, that change in the antiderivative function, and the reason I used t was because I wanted to use x for my variable of integration. Uh, I didn't want to use a dummy variable here, so I used t here. Uh, integral from 1 to t of y of x dx is, of course, equal to the change in our antiderivative function. Uh, equal to this. You can verify that easily if you know the calculus. Okay, now since slopes are average values of y prime, the derivative of y prime, again, if you know the calculus, you understand why that's the case. It follows then that the derivative of the antiderivative is the original function, which is pretty close to the statement of the fundamental theorem of calculus. As we allow the increment here uh, to shrink from 0.1, say, to 0 0.01, 0, 0, 001, et cetera, approaching 0, uh, these values will match the derivative of this antiderivative function um, more and more perfectly, approaching perfection as the increment approaches 0. Uh, 